In this lecture, we shall be discussing Maxwell's inductance bridge. This lecture has been prepared by R. S. Tare and Saurabh Jain. Following are the objectives of this lecture. To enlist the use of Maxwell's inductance bridge. To understand the circuit of Maxwell's inductance bridge. To derive the balance equations for the Maxwell's inductance bridge. To draw the phasor diagram of Maxwell's inductance bridge. To list the limitations of Maxwell's inductance bridge. Now, let us try to find out the answer for, for what Maxwell's inductance bridge is used. We frequently encounter applications of inductance in power systems, power electronics, electrical machines and other fields of electrical engineering and also electronics and communication engineering. When a practical inductance is fabricated, it is always associated with some resistance as a built-in feature due to resistance of the conductor used for making inductance and also because of losses taking place in the magnetic material used in the construction of inductance. Thus, we need an instrument to measure the inductance of a coil along with the equivalent resistance. Maxwell's inductance bridge measures the unknown inductance and the equivalent resistance of the coil in terms of standard variable inductance and standard variable resistance. Now, let us take the circuit layout of Maxwell's inductance bridge. This bridge circuit is characterized by the arm 1 having unknown inductance L1 with its unknown resistance R1. Arm 2 having standard variable inductance L2 and resistance R2. Lowercase r2 is the coil's internal resistance which is known. Arm 3 having a standard resistance r3 which is non-inductive. Arm 4 again this is having a standard non-inductive resistance r4. V is the applied sinusoidal excitation of a known frequency. E1 E2, E3 and E4 are the four arm voltages which are phasors. D is the alternating current detector which can find out, which can detect very small values of AC voltages or AC currents. A, B, C and D are the four vertices of the bridge. I1, I2, I3 and I4 are the four arm currents which are phasors. Under the balanced operating condition of the bridge, no current passes through the detector. This leads to I1 equal to I3 and I2 equal to I4. Later, we will justify why do we prefer to keep L2 and R2 as standard variable elements in Maxwell's inductance bridge. Now we will try to derive the balance equations of Maxwell's inductance bridge. Since in this bridge all the four arms are quite distinct and therefore we can use the equation Z1 into Z4 equal to Z2 into Z3. Now, let us define the four arm impedances of Maxwell's inductance bridge. Z1 equal to 
R1 plus J omega L1 where omega is the frequency of excitation. J2 equal to R2 plus lowercase r2 plus J omega L2 where lowercase r2 is the resistance of the inductance L2. Z3 equal to R3 and Z4 equal to R4. Now let us substitute for Z1, Z2, Z3 and Z4. After substitution we get R1 plus J omega L1 multiplied by R4 equal to R2 plus lowercase r2 plus j omega l2 multiplied by r3. After simplification, we get r1 r4 plus j omega l1 r4 equal to r2 plus lowercase r2 multiplied by r3 plus j omega l2 r3. Separating above equation in real and imaginary parts we get by equating the real parts we get r1 into r4 equal to r2 plus lowercase r2 multiplied by r3 and by equating the imaginary parts we get j omega l1 r4 equal to j omega l2 r3 solving these two equations for unknown l1 and r1 we get R1 that is the resistance of the coil equal to R3 upon R4 multiplied by R2 plus lowercase r2 and the inductance of the coil L1 equal to R3 upon R4 multiplied by L2. Following are the important observations on balance equations. R2 appears in first equation but not in second equation. L2 appears in second equation but not in the first equation. Therefore, for ensuring fast convergence of this bridge, we must select L2 and R2 as standard variable elements. Now, we will develop a method for drawing the phasor diagram of Maxwell's inductance bridge. The adjacent figure shows the Maxwell's inductance bridge. Important observations made for this bridge are I1 equal to I3 and I2 equal to R4. That is branch 1 current is same as branch 3 current. Branch 2 current is same as branch 4 current. Further, the voltage drop VBC must be equal to voltage drop VDC. Both the voltage drops must be same in phases and also in magnitudes. This is necessary for the balance condition of the bridge. That is, the current passing through the detector is zero. The voltage drop VBC is in phase with I1 because it is passing through resistor R3. The voltage drop VDC is in phase with I2 because I2 is passing through a resistance R4. This means that I1 and I2 are in the same phase. The two paths ABC and ADC are inductive in nature. Therefore, currents I1 and I2 will lag behind the applied voltage V and will be in same phase. Now, let us start drawing the phasor diagram for Maxwell's inductance bridge. Here we shall begin with the applied voltage phasor V as the reference phasor. Currents I1 and I2 are in same phase and they are lagging behind V by some angle because these are inductive currents. So, let us draw two phasors I1 and I2 of proper magnitudes each in phase with each other and lagging behind V by some angle 
as shown in the diagram. When current I1 passes through an inductive reactance J omega L1, it will create a voltage drop equal to I1 into omega L1 leading I1 by 90 degrees. This is shown in the phasor diagram. When current I1 passes through the resistance R1 that is the internal resistance of the coil whose inductance is L1 will create a voltage drop across R1 in phase with I1. So, from the tip of I1 into J omega L1 we will draw a line parallel to I1 representing the voltage drop I1 into R1 as shown in the diagram. The summation of the voltage drops I1 into J omega L1 plus I1 into R1 will lead to the point B as shown in the diagram. The current I1 passes through R3 will create a voltage drop I1 into R3 when I1 R3 voltage drop is added to VAB it will cause the voltage VAB plus VBC equal to VAC as shown in the diagram. Now let us take the second path followed by current I2. When I2 flows through L2 it will create a voltage drop equal to I2 into J omega L2 leading I2 by 90 degrees. The I2 J omega L2 phasor drawn in red color has been shown in the diagram. When I2 passes through R2 it will create a voltage drop in phase with I2. So the voltage drop I2 into R2 plus lowercase r2 when added to I2 into J omega L2 will lead to a point D. Since point B and D are at the same potential therefore I2 into J omega L2 must be same as I1 into J omega L1 and I1 into R1 must be same as I2 into R2 plus lowercase r2. Points B and D now will overlap over each other. When current I2 passes through R4, it will create a voltage drop equal to I2 into R4 in phase with I2. So from point D, let us draw a line along I2 into R2 plus lowercase r2 that is parallel to I2 such that when added to the voltage drop VAD, the resulting voltage drop is VAC. This additional phasor I2 into R4 is shown in the adjacent phasor diagram. Now let us discuss the advantages of Maxwell's inductance bridge. This bridge is very simple in construction. The balance equations are independent of variable elements L2 and R2. Therefore, the convergence of this bridge is very fast. This bridge is suitable for the measurement of inductance and resistance of a coil having low Q. Now, let us enlist the disadvantages of Maxwell's inductance bridge. This bridge uses standard variable inductance. Therefore, this bridge is quite expensive. When this bridge is used for the measurement of inductance of high Q coils, the value of resistance R4 becomes very high. Therefore, this bridge is not suitable for the measurement of inductance of high Q coils. Now, let us summarize this lecture. In this lecture, we have learned following. The use of Maxwell's inductance bridge. The circuit layout of Maxwell's inductance bridge. To derive the balance equations for the Maxwell's inductance bridge. 
to draw the phasor diagram of Maxwell's inductance bridge. The limitations of Maxwell's inductance bridge. 